And good evening, everybody, and welcome to TV Tuesday Live. My name is Scott Jordan, and you're watching live here at Sellers of Sonoma in beautiful Railroad Square, Santa Rosa, California. I'm not surprised, not everything lasts. I've broken my heart so many times I stopped keeping track. Talk myself in, I talk myself out. I get all worked up, then I let myself down. I tried so very hard not to lose it. I came up with a million excuses. I thought I thought of every possibility. And I know someday that it'll all turn out. You'll make me work so we can work for work it out. And I promise you, kid, that I'll get so and good evening, everybody, and welcome to TV Tuesday Live. This is where you discover wine one sip at a time here at Cellars of Sonoma. My name is Scott Jordan, and uh, we're going to talk about wine, educate you about wine. We're also uh, talking about food, and, and uh, tonight I'm thrilled to have our neighbor from down the street that we've worked with on, on uh, recipes and, and other events here. Uh, his name is Jack Mitchell. He is the chef and owner of Jack and Tony's from down the street. Jack, thank you very much. Welcome. I know it's hard to I know it's hard to, to do this today because we've got the Giants game on behind us. Yes, we are winning right now, so we're in good spirit. Thanks, Scott. So welcome. Good to see you, my man. Um, I feel like part of the wine club. There you go. Getting to participate with the recipes and man. I, I love it. I love it. So whenever we send the uh, wine club, something good happen? Uh oh, okay. Whenever we uh, send out the wine club shipments. Um, what Jack does is he makes a recipe that pairs up with each of the wines. And he's been doing that now, gosh, well, probably almost two years, right? I mean, probably. Almost from the very beginning. And um, what, we, what we did last month, uh, or last shipment, uh, I had a lot of customers that really like to cook the recipes. And, and taste so, the wines. And taste the wines. And what they wanted to do is... Uh, we decided to have a contest and have them pick whatever recipe you wrote mm -hmm. and uh, make the dish and bring it in here. Well, here's what we found out. Not only did they want to modify it, they didn't even want the recipe ingredients written out. They just want, I mean, the, the measurements or anything or, or, or proportions, they just wanted ingredients and let them figure out the recipe, which I thought was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Very inventive. Yeah. And they came up with a couple of really nice dishes. They did. They did. And so here's what we're going to launch tonight, um, our wine club recipe con contest. It will be held here in the tasting room, May 21st, from 4 till 6 or so. Uh, we have live music that night at 7.30, so we'll kind of wrap it all into an evening event. Dinner and a show. Yeah, I love that, right? <laughs> um, so uh, if, you're, if you are a chef, you like to cook, um, and uh, you know you want to you want to participate. Here's what you're going to do. Uh, let me give you the rules first, and then we'll talk about the dishes, and then we're going to taste through the wines. And then Jack has picked the cab uh, appropriately. Mm -hmm. um, he he actually uh, is going to cook up an appetizer to go with that cab, and we'll have as, that as if I were in the contest. This yeah. is what I would have come up yeah. with. So you can steal the idea, but we want you to be creative. You guys do your own thing. Um, let me give you the rules, though. Rules are you gotta pick, you gotta use the majority of the ingredients uh, in listed in each wine. Um, make enough to share with about 30 people, because we'll have about 30 people here. Um, we're only going to have this available for 10 chefs. You have to sign up, and at the sign up, you're going to pick the dish you're, you're going to uh, pair up with the wine. Uh, if you're going to do a second dish or a third or fourth, you can do that. You just need to let me know. Mm -hmm. It will be limited to 10, so sign up early. Um, obvious ingredients like salt, pepper, olive oil, flour, etc. are assumed to be available. Um, and then we'll have one winner uh, for each food pairing. And of course, for each we, of the varieties. Of each variety, right. yeah. And uh, we supply the wine, you bring the dish, that's what it's going to be. It's $20 per person. Ten dollars for wine. Ten dollars for the wine club. Uh, chefs and one guest are free. So if you're a chef, bring your guest. Uh, you're free. And uh, 
uh, you know, that that's going to be a very, very fun event. I can't wait. That's going to be very cool. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to pour the first wine, mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about the ingredients that you came sure. up with and sure. why you came up with those ingredients. Um, so in the wine club shipment, one of the wines is the 06 Denaw Trey Cave Chardonnay. It comes from the Sonoma Coast region. For those of you not familiar with the Sonoma Coast, we are about 50 miles north of the Golden Gate Bridge off the 101 corridor. The Sonoma Coast region is just a little west, and it runs up the entire coast of, of California. Of mostly Sonoma County. Yeah. It's a little bit of overlap. Yeah, there's a little overlap. And um, um, it's, it's the biggest Appalachian. And it's the perfect climate for Chardonnay. You've got um, hot days in the summer, but in the afternoon when the when the fog rolls in, it takes those temperatures right from Way the high down, 80s right? and 90s right down to 50s like that. You think you opened up a refrigerator door. <laughs> so this is Denaz 2006. Um, it was in your wine club shipment at $35. Wow. Your reorder price is $26.25. I'll extend that for anybody that's watching the broadcast. If they want to order additional bottles, you can go ahead and do that at the reorder price of $26.25, which is a steal. you got to love that. Great color. Beautiful color. Uh, Denaz likes to age their wines in the bottle a long time. This is a lot longer than you're seeing in most of the uh, Chardonnays that are out there right now. Most of them are into the 07s, 08s, mm -hmm. maybe even 09s in some cases. For the lesser wines, yeah. Yeah. The grocery store thing. Yeah. Bar barrel fermented, 100% um, malolactic. Um, that allows it to age better in the, in the bottle. Big, beautiful finish. It's a fun, right. fun wine to pair with food. So tell everybody what you what you picked as the ingredients. Now, you've got to pick the majority of these ingredients if you're going to do the, the food pairing with this wine. Right. right. And, you know, as a judge, I look at uh, the usage and utilization of those ingredients. There's a little bit of overlap, especially with this one. I thought first um, to do some shellfish and came mm -hmm. up with the scallops, and I thought maybe it would be more fun to do something with um, a little bit uh, more accessible and a little bit more um, flexible like a prawn. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, let's leave both in there. Maybe someone will do a combination of brochette with prawns and scallops, possibly. Wow. Um, or they could choose one or the other of those. Um, I have uh, some experience in doing these. They're called a black box or a mystery box competition where you generally you're on stage or in a studio and they present you with a fully stocked pantry and kitchen and all kinds of equipment mm -hmm. and then several ingredients, the mystery ingredients. And generally in the competitions, you're competing against someone. You have to utilize different techniques, mm -hmm. um, the, all the ingredients, and come up with something coherent. Mm -hmm. And so for each of the wines, tasting the wines, I thought about things that would work with the wines and then threw in a couple of little wrinkles that uh, people might not necessarily have in their pantries or are commonly used in their repertoire of, of recipes but that might be fun because i think they're going to fit in nicely with the rest of the ingredients for the wine love it yeah love so, it. so this one i wanted to do shellfish so we picked the prawns and the scallops um, really in any form so that means you could grill the scallops you could you know make a brochette with the prawns um, you, anything like that, uh, but then using the other ingredients, um, again, in any way possible. Russet potatoes and cream kind of lean towards uh, like a mashed potato puree or something like that. Mm -hmm. But if you held the cream out and fried the potatoes into like a matchstick, you could use it as a crispy element and then oh, use nice. the caraway seed infused into the cream, which is another of the nice. ingredients, and use that for your sauce. So there's a lot of leeway for for really anyone to come up with something still using all those ingredients. Now you're making me hungry when we pick the dish that you're going to show at the end. I mean, you know, I'm going to be dying. Should have thought of that. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. And also this one we feature uh, Savruga caviar, which, okay. uh, like I said, this is there's a little bit of leeway in this competition. There's nothing other than bragging rights riding on it. So, uh -huh. um, you know, if you wanted to substitute, like, um, say a smoked salmon caviar or okay. a flavored tobacco caviar that would still in the judge's opinion still qualify okay if maybe there was an ingredient that we wanted to add in or the the home chef wanted to add in instead of the caraway go with fennel seed i could see how that's fine but if they wanted to feature tomatoes or cucumbers in this dish and it really doesn't call for a large ingredient like that that's probably going to deduct points okay all right 
Um, so we're going to take a little break. Uh, those of you watching live, the, the, the video feed will continue. We just stopped the broadcast. I'm going to ask a question, and I'm going to answer it on the other side of the break. Um, and it's a question we get in the taste room all the time. Um, it's a true and false, so you got a 50% chance right out of the gate. should do pretty well. If you're switching to a different wine in your glass, it's best to swirl some water into the glass first. So you're switching, say, from white to red or red to white. It's best to, to swirl some water into the glass. We'll answer that on the back of the break. We'll be right back.